Welcome students. Today we will discuss orthographic projections. It is unit number 3. So let us start the lecture. We know that whenever we have to manufacture any product, we have to communicate the design of that product to all the concerned persons involved in the manufacturing. And we know for that we use engineering drawings to communicate the design of an object to all the concerned persons. Now on drawing we draw different views of an object in order to communicate the shape and size of each part of the object or we can say in order to communicate the complete geometry of the object to the concerned persons involved in the manufacturing. For every object, there are six principal views. When observer looks at the object from a particular side, observer fix that side as front side of the object and based on that assumption, other five views of the objects are made. So in this case, one object is shown and observer is looking at the object from this side and he has assumed this side as front side of the object and after that observer will decide the remaining five views of the object. When observer moves to his left and when he will look at the object from the left side so whatever shape observer will see from that side that will be called as left hand side view of the object. Similarly when observer moves towards the right side and when he will look at the object from that side, whatever shape he will see that will be called as right hand side view of the object. Similarly, when observer will look at the object from top, then whatever shape observer will see from the top, that will be called as top view of the object. And when observer will see the object from rear side, then whatever shape observer will see that will be called as rear view of the object. Similarly, when observer will look at the object from bottom, so whatever shape he will see that will be called as bottom view of the object. So for every object, there are six principal views. Now over here, one very important question arises that whenever we have to draw engineering drawing of an object, then how many views we should draw on that drawing. Do we have to draw all the six principal views? No. It depends upon the complexity of the object. If the object has simple geometry and we are able to communicate the complete geometry of the object in just two views, let us say in front view and in top view, then there is no need of drawing other views. So number of views on a drawing for a particular object will depend upon the complexity of the object. So if we feel that in just two views we cannot communicate the complete geometry of the object then we go for more views means we keep on adding left hand side view, right hand side view or the required number of views for that particular object. So let us see the six principal views of this particular example in the next slide. Now over here six principal views of that object are shown. This is the front view. So below front view we draw top view and on the left side of the front view we draw right hand side view and on right side of the front view we draw left hand side view and we draw bottom view above front view and this is the rear view of the object. This pattern we follow under first angle of projection method. Now one very important point we have to understand that whenever we have to draw different views of an object on the drawing then we have to keep the shape and size of the views similar to the facing surface of the object. Now you can see when observer look at the object from any particular side then whatever shape and size of the faces are visible to the observer same shape and size we need to draw on the drawings. 
because only those views will help in communicating the geometry of the object. Now in order to achieve this we use orthographic projections. So we can say that orthographic projections helps us to draw the views uh, in such a way that uh, those are similar to the uh, facing surface of the object. Now let us see uh, how orthographic projections uh, helps us in achieving this through this example. Suppose uh, over here we have one line and uh, let us say that observer is looking at that particular line. And let us say there is some length of that line and when observer looks at that particular line then what happens rays of sight from the eyes of observer strikes that particular object and uh, those rays of sight project the image of the object onto the reference plane. So in this case we are talking about vertical plane because observer is looking from front side. Now over here if we want to uh, project the same shape and size of the object as it is faced by the observer then we need projectors which are parallel to each other and these are perpendicular to plane of projection. So if these projectors are parallel to each other and they are perpendicular to the plane of projection only then these projectors will be able to transfer the same shape and size of the object as faced by the observer. So such projections where we use projectors as parallel to each other and perpendicular to plane of projection in order to transfer the same shape and size of the object onto reference plane then those projections are known as orthographic projections. So you can see over here now we get same shape and size of the object as it is faced by the observer. And in order to achieve this, in order to achieve the parallel projectors, there is one important condition. Condition is that distance between the object and the observer should be infinite. Because if distance is infinite, only then the projectors from the eyes of the observer will be parallel to each other. And how we consider that distance as infinite? Uh, we can say that the distance between the observer and the object is infinite if that distance is very very large as compared to the size of the object. So from this let us see the definition of orthographic projections. So definition is if observer's eye is at infinite distance from an object such that the lines of sight are parallel to each other and perpendicular to plane of projection. The projection obtained which would be of same size and shape as the facing surface of the object is called an orthographic projection. Now in order to understand orthographic projections we need the knowledge of projections of planes first. So in these two slides we will see how we can obtain the images of planes in different orientation. Now let us first place a rectangular plane perpendicular to vertical plane and parallel to horizontal plane. Let us observe that uh, what type of images we will get when we will place a particular plane perpendicular to any reference plane. So in this case we have placed this rectangular plane perpendicular to vertical plane. So when we will look at this plane from front side we will only see an edge of that plane. So it means if we have a plane perpendicular to any reference plane then on that plane the projection of that plane will be an edge view or we can say a line. So this is the front view of the rectangular plane. So from here we have concluded that front view of this plane will be a line parallel to xy. 
Now let us understand what will happen if we will keep a plane parallel to any reference plane. Let us see what type of projection we will get in that case. So over here we have kept this plane parallel to horizontal plane. So when we will project its image on that plane, we will get its top view and that will be true shape. Means whatever shape is visible to the observer from top, same shape and size is transferred on the horizontal plane. So we'll call that as true shape. So from here we have concluded that if we have a plane parallel to any reference plane, then on that plane its projection will be a true shape. So this we have to keep in our mind that when a plane is perpendicular to any reference plane, on that plane its image will be a line. But if a plane is parallel to any reference plane, on that plane its image will be a true shape. So let us summarize these points. When a plane is perpendicular to a reference plane, its projection on that plane is an edge view that is a straight line. When a plane is parallel to a reference plane, its projection on that plane projects its true shape and size. Now let us understand what will happen if we will keep a plane inclined at some angle to the reference plane. Now in this case uh, we have this rectangular plane and it is shown inclined to horizontal plane at an angle theta and it is perpendicular to the vertical plane. And in the previous slide we have learned that if we have a plane which is perpendicular to any reference plane then on that plane its projection will be a line. So over here you can see the front view of this line is a straight line and it has the same angle as that of the plane with the horizontal plane. So same angle it has with the horizontal line or with the xy line. So we can say in this case its front view will be a line inclined to xy. Now let us see what will happen. Uh, in this case, if we have to draw its top view, you can see the plane is inclined at some angle to the horizontal plane. So when we project its top view, then we will find that its top view will be of reduced shape, means the shape is not same as that of the plane. So its top view will be a reduced shape. So from here we can conclude that if we have a plane inclined at some angle to any reference plane then on that plane its projection will be a reduced shape. So from that discussion we have concluded that when a plane is inclined to a reference plane its projection on that plane is smaller in size than the plane itself. So these three important points we have to keep in our mind. These three points will help us in drawing the orthographic projections of an object. Now next we will talk about important features of an object. First is edge. So what is an edge? It is a line that represents the boundary between the two faces. So you can see over here we are shown one object having flat faces. And over here, the boundary between the two faces is called an edge. If we have a cylindrical object, then in that case we can say this is an edge. And if we have a round object, then we will say there is no edge. The next is corner. It represents the intersection of two or more edges. So you can see in the first example, these two edges or in fact three edges are intersecting at a point so that intersection is called as corner. In case of cylindrical objects, we don't have any corner. Similar is the case with round objects. Next we will see surfaces. So what are surfaces? Very easy. Surfaces are areas that are bound by edges or limiting elements. So there is a new uh, term over here limiting element, we will see it shortly. So let us first see what is surface. Surfaces are 
areas that are bound by edges. So in the first example, you can see uh, these are the areas bound by the edges. So we call it as surface. In case of cylindrical objects, these are the two surfaces. And in case of round object, we will say this is the surface. Now next is limiting element. So let us see what is limiting element. It is a line that represents the last visible part of the curved surface. Now when we look at any curved surface, we see the last visible part of the curved surface. So that is called as limiting element. So if we look at uh, a sphere, we see a circle as the last visible part. So that is called as limiting element for that surface. Similarly, if we look at a, a cylinder, then we see uh, the top and bottom edge, let us say. So those are the last visible parts of the curved surface. So those will be called as limiting elements. So in the previous slides, we have learned about parallel planes, perpendicular planes or inclined planes. So we will relate that learning to the objects now. We will see uh, if we have parallel faces in, in an object or perpendicular faces in an object, then what those faces uh, will contribute in drawing the orthographic projections of that particular object. So let us take one example over here. Uh, we are given one object. Now in this object, you can see we have three faces visible. And of course, in this object, there are six faces. Uh, let me call those by name that this is the front face, this is top face, this is right side face, then we have left side face, then we have rear face, then we have bottom face. So let us first talk about these three faces which are visible in this view. These are front face, top face and right side face. Now let us first observe the front face. Now you can see the front face of this object is parallel to this reference plane. And we have learned in the previous slides that if we have a plane parallel to any reference plane, then image of that plane on that reference plane will be true shape. So you can see over here, when observer will look at this object, so the faces of the object which are parallel to the reference plane, those faces will be projected as true shape on the reference plane by the observer or we can see, say that the observer will see those faces as true shapes. But if we will talk about the top face, now you can see over here this face is perpendicular to the reference plane and in the previous slide we have learned that if we have a plane perpendicular to any reference plane then on that plane its image will be a line. So when observer will look at this particular face, this face will be visible as a line only. And that line also is the part of the, this front face. So it means if we have to find where this plane is in the front view or in this image, then we can say that this edge, top edge, is representing this edge or the front edge of this top face. So you can see that if the plane is perpendicular to any reference plane, then for observer that plane will be a line only. The same is the case with the, this right hand side face. Now you see this right hand side face is also perpendicular to VP. So observer can't see this plane as well. For observer this plane will be a line only and that line is also the part of this front face fine or we can say that edge is also the part of the front face so in this view in the front view drawn by us over here you can see this edge we can say is representing edge of this right side face similar uh, explanation will be there for left hand side face bottom face fine because left hand side face and bottom face. These are also perpendicular to plane of projections. But if we talk about rear face, now rear face has same shape and size as that of the front face. 
and it is also parallel to VP. But it is covered by the front face. So there is no need to talk about the rear face because if we will draw the front face, behind front face there will be a rear face also and that face has the same shape and size so no need to represent that separately. So it means in this case the front view of this object will be only a rectangular face of true shape and size. So from here we concluded one very important point that when we look at any object from any particular direction then from that direction we can see only that face which is parallel to the reference plane and the faces in the object which are perpendicular to the reference plane those faces will have an edge view only means a line. So if we uh, have to draw orthographic images of any particular object and in that object if we have parallel and perpendicular faces then we will search for parallel faces only. So in this case you see if I have to draw the front view of this object then I will see how many total number of faces are there. So in this object we know that there are six faces. Then I will see out of those six faces how many are parallel because when I will look at that object from the front side I will only see those faces which are parallel to VP. Fine. So this theory we have to use whenever we have to uh, draw orthographic projections of the objects. Now similarly if we have to draw its top view then we know that observer has to change his position he will look from top. Now again same fundamentals will be applicable. Again observer will see how many total number of faces are there and out of those faces how many are actually parallel to HP because when observer will look at the object from top he will only project on horizontal plane. So again we uh, can say that there are six faces but out of those six faces only one face is there which is parallel to HP. It means when observer will look at this object from top he will see only one face. It means he will draw its top view as single face. So this theory we have to keep in our mind whenever we have to draw orthographic projections of an object. So through this example we have seen uh, that what to do if we have an object having parallel and perpendicular faces. Now we will uh, see the objects having inclined faces. Now we will see what to do if we have objects having inclined faces. So let us see uh, that in this example. So you can see one object over here and let us say this is a length of 50 millimeters means the length of this hypotenuse is 50 millimeters and uh, let us say this perpendicular is of 30 millimeters and observer is looking at this object from this side. So let us say this is the front side of the object. Now over here we have to notice a very important thing. When observer will look at this inclined face then from front he cannot see this 50 mm length. Fine. Why he cannot see 50 mm length? Let us go back to our previous topic that was on projections of lines. So in that topic we said that if we have a line inclined at some angle to any reference plane then on that plane its view will be a reduced length. So you can see over here this inclined face consists of two lines one line here and one line here and both lines are inclined to this vertical plane. If we see their length, their length is given to us as 50 millimeters. But when observer will look at these two lines from front, he cannot see this length of 50 millimeters because these two lines are inclined to vertical plane. So observer will project their image on vertical plane as a reduced view. So now question comes how much reduction will be there or what observer will see. 
now you can see uh, we are dealing with orthographic projections so we have projectors which are parallel to each other and perpendicular to plane of projection so when observer will look at this inclined plane he will project projectors parallel to each other so let us take two projectors one projector will strike at this corner or this end of this line and the second projector will strike this end of that line now observer will see only that distance which is in between these two parallel projectors so distance between these two parallel projectors is equal to this perpendicular distance or this height we can say it means when observer will look at this inclined plane from front side he cannot see 50 millimeters he will only see 30 millimeters so this is a very important observation we have to keep in our mind so from here we have learned that if we have inclined surface in the object and when you look at that inclined surface from front then the height of that plane which will be visible from front will be equal to the perpendicular distance of that plane with the base so its front view will be a rectangle still it will be a rectangle but it will be a reduced shape remember that we have learned this in the previous slides when we were talking about the diffy of a plane inclined to any reference plane on that plane we will have a reduced shape so you see we have a reduced shape so what is reduced in this case in this case only its height is reduced it is how much now it is 30 millimeters but if we will talk about its length length is not reduced so let us say this length is 20 millimeters so same length we have to draw 20 millimeters why let us see now see this particular line of this face and this line both the edges of this plane are parallel to vp see this edge and this edge both are parallel to vp so when observer will look at this plane then he will project same shape and size on the vertical plane because these two edges are parallel to vp it means observer can see its length as 20 millimeters same same size so over here we will draw same size so this is a very important observation we made for inclined planes so this you should keep in your mind whenever you are solving any problem on orthographic projections now in the next slide we will observe same object from top we have same object let us observe it from top so when observer will look from top let us see what shape he will see so first of all see the dimensions of this object let us say the base of this object is of 40 mm so again we are given this uh, size as 50 millimeters for the inclined face but when observer will see it from top it will be a width for the observer now let us see how much width observer will see from top he cannot see this 50 mm from top why because see these two lines these two edges are inclined to hp also so if these two lines are inclined to hp then their projection on hp will be reduced lengths so when observer will look at this plane from top of course he will make use of orthographic projections means projectors will be parallel to each other and perpendicular to plane of projection then observer can see only that distance which is in between those two parallel projectors so you can see over here so that will be equal to the base length of that particular plane so this is another important observation we made so if observer has to draw its top view then in the top view of course it will be a rectangular shape but it will be a reduced shape so what will be reduced in this case width will reduce so how much width observer will see from top we will see only 40 millimeters and that is equal to the base length of that inclined plane 
But another observation uh, we, have, we should make over here that when observer will look at this plane, uh, then he will project same length of that plane. Let us say the length of the plane is 20 millimeters. So you see this particular edge and this edge of this plane are parallel to HP. It means observer can project same lengths on HP. So it means when we will draw top view of this inclined plane, we will keep same length. If length is of 20 millimeters, then over here also in the top view, we have to draw that as 20 millimeters. So this we should keep in our mind uh, reg regarding the projections of inclined faces whenever we are dealing with orthographic projections. Now we will see what will happen if we will uh, deal with curved surfaces. So over here uh, one cylindrical object is shown and let us observe it from front. Now very important observation we have to keep in our mind that when we look at any curved surface from front then human eye cannot see the curved surface. That curved surface will be a flat face for the human eye. Fine, but you will argue, you will say no, we can see the flat uh, curved surface. No, we know about curved surface because we are familiar with the 3D of that object. But if you don't know the 3D of any object and you are looking at a curved surface, you can't observe that whether that surface is a curved surface or it is a flat face. So when human eye looks at any curved surface, for human eye its projection will be a flat face. So in this case, if I have to draw its front view, then its front view will be a rectangle only. So you see what will be the height of that rectangle. Height of that rectangle will be equal to the diameter and the limiting element. You can see the last edge of the curved surface we see. So this is the limiting element and this is the limiting element. So this will help us to project its image as a rectangle on the reference plane. So this you have to keep in your mind. Similarly, if you will look at this cylindrical object from top, again its image will be a rectangle. Now next we will talk about hidden faces. It is a very important part in orthographic projections. Now over here one object is shown to us and uh, let us say this is the front side of the object. So if we will look from front uh, you see we can see two faces. This face and this face because both are parallel to vertical plane. But if I have to observe same object from rear, then from rear I cannot see this face. Only one face which is at the back is visible to us. But we know that there is another face behind that face, behind its rear face. So whenever we will draw its rear view, in the rear view we have to show this face also. And we have to show this face as a hidden face. So how we can show that face as hidden face? By using dash to medium line. If you can recall, we have discussed this in line types also. That whenever we draw images of an object, then it may happen that some faces may not be visible from particular side. Then when you will draw the projection from that side, you have to show those faces as hidden faces by using dashed medium lines. So when we have to solve orthographic projections of an object, we have to keep this thing also in our mind that there can be some hidden faces in the object from a particular direction. Then while drawing projections from that particular direction, we have to show those hidden faces also by using dashed medium lines. Next we will talk about representation of holes. Over here one object is shown and let us say this is the front view of this object. Means this is the front side of this object. 
Now over here in this object, if I will look from front, I have to see how many faces are there. So in this object also, there are six faces, front, top, bottom, right side, left side, and back face. So out of these six faces, I will see only those faces which are parallel to the plane of projection. So it means when I will look at this object from front, only one face is there, parallel. So its front view will be a rectangle only. But in this case, it is not just a rectangle. In that, we have a hole also. We have a hollow portion. So it means if I have to represent its front view, I have to show that hole as a circle because that hole is visible from this side as a circular element. So we have shown that hole by drawing a circle in that rectangle. And whenever we have to show hole in a particular uh, surface, we have to show its two axes also. We have to show horizontal center line and vertical center line of that particular hole. Now after that, when we will observe this object from top, you can see we will see only one face because only one face is there which is parallel to HP. So we will draw that face that rectangular face below xy line if you are working in first angle of projection. But we have talked about in the previous slide that if there are certain features of the object which are not visible from any particular side means are hidden behind some faces, we have to show those through hidden lines. Now if you see this particular hole, it is not visible from top because it is hidden behind this face. But we know there is a hole. So when we will draw its top view, we need to represent this hole by dashed medium lines. So how you will represent? Now when you will look at this hole from top, one ray of sight will strike at, uh, let us say, this diametric end and other will strike at this diametric end or we can say the limiting element. So it means when I will see from top, I need to show only two lines in the top view. So you can see from the front view we have taken projections from the hole and in the top view we have represented these two edges one limiting element here and second limiting element here. So those two are represented by dashed medium lines. So if there is a hole in the object which is not visible from any particular side then we have to see their limiting element and we have to draw those limiting elements as dash medium line in the view. And after that we must represent its axis also by using center line. Okay, so in this lecture we have seen all the important points or the fundamentals which we need for uh, orthographic projections. So in the next lecture, we will discuss one problem and we will see how to draw orthographic projections of a particular object. Thank you very much.